So this is the ultimate guide to leveling for new players in Elden Ring. So whether you have just started playing or are relatively new with a low level, today I bring you a simple guide in leveling up super fast. You won't see any other guide like this on YouTube, mark my words. Now the end game to this will see you easily into those hundreds of levels and being able to level up there on after with minimal effort, with no fighting at all involved. So when you are done with this guide people, you will end up here on screen now, within this area where you can earn millions of runes within minutes, with an easy method of earning almost 500k runes within 30 seconds, and much much more. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more out of ring, be sure to subscribe. So just so you guys know, as I recorded all this footage, I started a fresh character, just to prove to you it all works just fine. So this guide will all be time stamped, just in case there are steps you've already done, but still want to farm those millions of runes super quick, and get to that end game place I just showcased. I will also pin everything at the top of the comments section. Now the guide starts at the very beginning, as you first start the game, all you will need to do is have your mount. This is achieved from the Church of Ella, right near the start. I've already made a guide on that, which I'll link below if you haven't even got that far yet. But it's literally the first five minutes into the game. So once you have your mount from here, guys, I will guide you into getting 75k free runes for no work at all. Literally, all you have to do is hit an enemy for about three minutes. The enemy don't hit back. Simple. But firstly, we need to get a weapon with that Bloodlust build up on. If you have any weapon with this effect, this passive effect already on, you are fine to skip this part. For those that don't, from the first step grace point, head to this marker on the map, to the Death Touch Catacombs. This cave beholds an amazing katana, the one samurai start with, which has those passive effects which we need to kill that dragon and it to be much more efficient. So once you get here guys, follow the path I take inside to get this weapon, then simply run back out as I do. So from this point guys, we are running west. Now as I run and you follow on screen now, make sure you activate every grace point you see. Feel free to pause the video while you do so, it's very important. Make sure you get the Callum Druin's grace point, because we will be back here. And that is this grace point we can see on screen now. This is the Callum Moon's grace point people. Make sure you get this one. Then just follow the path I take to the Callig grace point. This is where we get those easy 75k free runes from killing a dragon who is asleep.
So once you get here guys, with that katana at hand, simply come to this enormous dragon and keep hitting it. With that bloodlust build up, you will see with certain hits, massive chunks of health coming off, which makes this much, much quicker. I mean, this isn't, this passive effect isn't needed, but it just makes this much quicker. So the dragon is down and you have 75k runes. Here, head to that grace point and level up. I recommend you having at least 20 points in health because it will be needed at a later stage in the video. Do what you like with the rest. From here guys, we're going to head northeast for another 40k plus 3 runes. So follow this short path I take on screen now to this grace. So once at this grace guys, turn it to night time. From here, we're going to kite an enemy, that enemy you can see on the bridge, up the hill behind it, through poison spores, which will kill him without you taking any damage from him. And to be honest, you don't want him anyway because he'll probably one hit you. This guy only appears at night by the way, that's why you gotta change it to night time. So once you are ready, run past him. But make sure you aid in that full sprint mode on your horse because you will leave him behind and you will lose aggro we don't want that also guys don't jump off your horse either not like what i'm doing in the video i don't know what was going on with my controller here but it kept slinging me off my horse so stay on your horse just make sure you keep this enemy close to you so once you get to the top of this hill turn left if his health bar just vanishes it's either because he's dead or his last interest so make sure he isn't too far behind you. Give it a few seconds guys and it should come up that he's been slayed. Here you'll get your few runes. Now fast travel back to that grace point, that Lenny's Rise grace point and level up. Now from this spot guys there is a decent rune farm where you can run down this hill. A boulder will spawn and come towards you. If you get out of the way quick enough it will roll off the map and reward you 2k runes. You can do this with two boulders on this hill. But it's really not needed because by the time you finish this guide, you will be earning 100 times more. Okay, so from here guys, head back to the Callum's Ruins Grace Point that we activated earlier. While we are in this area, we need to pick up a few important things for later. Namely, the Rotten Straight Ashes, which is a Spirit Summon, and a few Grave Glove Warts to level up the Ashes later on. So from this Grace Point guys, follow the path I take. Again, activate every grace you see. Eventually you'll get to this point in the swamps, quickly grab the spirit summon and head back to that grace.
Okay, so from here, guys, back to that Kalen Ruins burst point we go. As here, we need to run to a, a catacombs and grab some grave glove warts. So follow the path I take on the screen now. Ignore all enemies and just run for this door. This is the minor earth tree catacombs. Once here guys, follow the path I take, grab these three glove warts and head back out of here. Okay, so from here guys, we're heading back to the first step grace point. Now once you load in, if there's an NPC on your left hand side, go up to him and clear out all his dialogue. If there's not one there for you, and you haven't previously killed him, ignore this step. Okay, so from here, we are going to grab two more grave glove warts for later on. These you can see located down west. Just follow the markers as I place them, and do as I do on screen now, and go get these things. So once you eventually get down here, this is the Tombs of War Catacombs, follow the path I take, this is literally the first room, and grab these two plants and get out of here. Okay, so from here guys, head back to that first step grace point because we are now going to grab an item which we can use to exploit the first boss so you want to follow the path i take right now on screen to merc water cave Okay, so when you first get here, you will be auto kicked off of your horse and the cave will close up. Here, you will be invaded. What you want to do here, guys, is run back the way you came and the invader will despawn and the cave will open back up. So go back to the cave guys and head to the very bottom.
Once you are down here, open this chest. Upon you doing this, you will hear the voice of an NPC called Patches. This will trigger a fight. And here what you want to do is take his health down to half and then he will surrender. From here guys, do not hit him again. Upon you doing this, he would eventually become friendly. Here you need to speak to him and clear out all his dialogue because he becomes a vendor where we can purchase things off. Now I will state this and it goes for Patches and any other NPC we will be talking to today. If there's a dialogue choice, always pick the top option. Okay, so clearing out all his dialogue, he will then become that vendor. So here guys, you need to fast travel back to the Grace at the top of this cave and then run back down. Speak with him again and you can now purchase things from him. The only thing we need here is the Margit Shackle and if you do have enough to buy it, buy the sword weapon here too. This will come in handy later because you will need another weapon which has no passive effects on but that's if you don't have one already. If you do, don't bother buying this weapon. Okay, so from here guys, you want to go to the Church of Ella. The original spot you would have got your mount from. It's located here on the map. Upon coming here guys, if it isn't already night time, turn it to night time. Upon you doing this, you will see Rena, who's sitting on the wall. Here you want to speak with her and clear out that dialogue. Remember, always pick that top dialogue choice. She will reward you or give you the spirit calling bell and the wolf summon tear. The spirit calling bell is what's used and allows you to summon spirits, which will be important very soon. Okay, so from here guys, we're going to go to the Stormhill Shack to meet another vendor who will allow you to eventually upgrade your summon tiers. So once you get here guys, Head into the shack and clear out all this NPC's dialogue. And from here guys, we will grab another item, which we will use later on to farm those runes. It's a talisman which helps with that bow and that range. So from this Stormhill shack, follow the path I take on screen now. Ignore all the enemies in the area, just grab the chest and grab that talisman. Simple. From here guys, head back to that Stormhill Shack Grace Point. And from here guys, we're going to fight the first of two main bosses. His name is Margit, so follow this short route up this hill to the Grace near this boss fight, as I do on screen now. So from here guys, equip that weapon without any passive effect on. Also equip that Margit Shackle to your consumable slot. Also make sure your Rotten Stray Summon is equipped ready for you to call in. From here guys go up to the boss door, which at first I can't really remember. If the door isn't here, the foggy yellow door isn't here and you can walk straight into the fight, do that. Then let the boss kill you. You'll then spawn outside of the fight at the grace and that yellow misty foggy door will be there for you. We need it to do an exploit guys to make this boss a much easier battle. So within that door in place, you need to be as close to it as you can possibly get. Also on your left hand side, make sure you activate that summon statue. This allows you to summon spirits in the area and more importantly, in this boss fight. Okay, so standing right up against this misty door, spam your Margit Shackle at least five or six times on the floor. Upon doing this, wait a couple of seconds and enter the fight. What you will notice is the boss will be frozen in place. From here, using that weapon with no passive effect on, stand in front of the boss and just light attack him. Also try not to move, any sudden movements and it can unfreeze him. The reason we needed a weapon with no passive effect on is because, let's say we're using that blood loss build up, when that comes into effect on that katana, it knocks him out of that free state. Also summoning your spirit, when that attacks him, it will knock him out of that free state. So leave your summon for now, as when it does get down to near half health, 
he has an animation automatically and he does jump out of his state and does fight back. So guys keep light like, attacking him until he does stagger and does that animation. As soon as this happens guys, call in your Rotten Stray Summon. And from here, you need to get his attention so your summon can cause that rot effect upon the boss. And this happens after a few attacks from your summon. You'll notice it's taken effect as the boss's health will take tick damage until the boss dies, even after your summon has already been killed. This effect doesn't wear out, so as soon as the boss is affected with this rot, all you have to do from here is just avoid the boss. And it's quite easy because it's quite slow. So here just stay afar as best you can, dodging any incoming attacks and he will eventually die. From here guys activate this grace. So from here guys as you see me doing on screen now we're going to run through the stone veil castle and grab every single grace on the way. So do as I do on screen now. So when you get to this point, initially this door will be closed, but we need to go inside of here because there's a key which helps us progress. Now upon the first time you enter in this room, the door closes behind you. And if you can't kill the main dude in here, that's fine, because the next time you come here, you can cheese him. So if that's what you need to do, when you next come here, go in through the door as it will be open now and it won't close behind you. Get the enemy's attention and run out of the room. You will notice he gets stuck behind the door. From here guys, just judge his attacks and heavy attack him through the wall in between each of his attacks. Upon him dying, within this room there will be a chest in the far left corner and also there will be an old rusty key you can grab from a guy in front of you. So grab them. From here guys, follow the path I take. Again, activating all graces within this castle. So upon running past all enemies and grabbing all graces, now you turn to the one you not long got called the Rampart Tower. From here guys we need to grab an important item. So follow where I go on screen now and grab this item. If you die, it doesn't matter as long as you grab it first.
So from here guys, head back to the Stormhill Shack. Once again, speak with the NPC. Her name is Roderica by the way, I don't know if I said that earlier. But give her the item we just grabbed. She will now mention she's returning to the round table. So clear her dialogue and fast travel to any grace on the map. Once you've done this guys, head to that round table. Now upon loading in here, you will see her by the fireplace. Head to her and clear out her dialogue. Now guys, you want to head to the smithing NPC and clear out any dialogue he has. He should have more dialogue above where it says leave in his menu. So clear out this option of dialogue too. Then head back to Roderica at the fireplace and clear out any dialogue she has. Do this until all dialogue is exhausted from both NPCs until they're literally repeating the same dialogue. Now guys, you need to load back into the round table. Once you've done that, head to that smithing NPC and right across from him will be Roderica. Here guys, you can now speak with her and level up your spirit summons. And with the five grave glove warts we collected earlier, you want to level up your rotten stray summon to a level five. You will also need exactly 1080 runes to level this up to a level five. These you probably already have, or you can sell things you don't need to the weapon smithing NPC behind you. Just sell anything we haven't collected today in this guide that you do not need, obviously. Okay, so from here, guys, we are heading back to that second boss fight of this guide. Probably easier than the first one, to be honest. His name is Godric the Grafted, and he's located right next to that secluded cell grace. So once you're here, guys, start the fight. And what you want to do here, guys, is call in your spirit summon straight away. Now, initially, you want to grab the boss's attention and have your summon bite him from behind, trying to get as many bites in as possible because we are aiming for the same thing to happen, which happened with the first boss, in getting your summon to apply that rot to the boss. When that happens, guys, again, just avoid him. Now, when I initially did this on my other character, he didn't go into a phase two. This time, he did. It doesn't really matter, though, either way, because that rot damage still ticks over. So from here, guys, just avoid him as best you can. And it really is as simple as that. Upon you killing him, and it might take more than one attempt, don't worry about it if it does, activate his grace point. And from here guys, you want to head back to the first step, grace point. Here you need to speak to that vendor on your left hand side, who will direct you to two fingers at the round table, who you need to go and speak to. So to the round table, you must go. So here guys, speak with two fingers and clear all dialogue. Once you've done this, head back to that first step grace point. From here guys where that vendor once stood will be a glowing rock. You need to interact with this glowing rock. What it does is start off a mini quest to get the medallion which allows you to teleport to that farming spot where you can earn millions of runes in minutes. So from here, we need to head to the Rose Church. So from here, guys, we need to head to that Godric the Grafted Grace Point we not long activated. So once here, follow the path I take on screen now to the Grace Point outside of this place. And from this grace point guys, follow the path to the Rose Church, but be real careful jumping down here. Once down, follow this direct path.
Okay, so once you get here, that NPC will be here and you need to speak with him. Clear out all dialogue guys and he will then give you 5 festering bloody fingers. So from here guys, head in this direction and activate this grace point, the fallen ruins of the lake. As we will need to travel back to him and this is the nearest one. Once done, you now want to head to that church of Ella Grace Point. Again, the one you originally got your map from. Now guys, what you want to do is go into your inventory and use those festering bloody fingers. What these do is allow you to invade other people's worlds and you need to do this three times in total. Now you don't need to kill them, you can die instantly, it still counts. So do this three times guys and you are done here. Upon getting that done, you now need to head back to the Rose Church and speak with that NPC again. So to that Fallen Ruins of the Lake Grace, you go. Okay, so from this Grace, head to the NPC and talk to him. He will now give you the Lord of Blood's Favour, a cloth you need to soak in a maiden's blood. From here guys, you need to head to the Church of Inhibition, where we soak this cloth in blood. So pinpoint it on the map right here guys, follow the route I take on the screen now, activating a few graces on the way, the Bellum Church Grace, the Frenzied Flame Village Outskirts Grace and also a vendor who you want to visit. So from the Fallen Ruins of Lake Grace guys, follow the path I take on screen now, grabbing all graces as you see them. As you come this way, on your right you will notice the rocks levelling off. Head up this path on your right. Now just here is that NPC vendor. If you have enough money on you, buy his bowl and all the possible arrows you can buy. You can get a max of 699, that's 99 on you and 600 in your chest. So buy as many as you can. If you can't afford them right now, it doesn't matter, you can come back later, as there's a grace right nearby up the top of this hill. Okay, so just further on is that Bellum Highway Grace. Activate this. So from here guys, follow the path I take to the Frenzied Flame Village Outskirts Grace. We need this grace as it's right near where we need to be, but it's important due to the madness that becomes applied to you in this area which can easily kill you. Hence why I said upon the first runes we earned today that you need at least 20 points in health. It's for this reason. So from this grace point guys, we are heading to the church of inhibition. Now when you get near this, you will also get thrown off your horse and invaded, but ignore that and run into the church and activate that grace.
From here guys, simply interact with this statue twice. The first time you'll get a armor set, the second time you'll soak this cloth with blood. So we are done here, we now need to head back to the NPC at the Rose Church. So to that fallen ruins of the Lake Grace we go. So once here guys, go to the NPC and clear out all dialogue. Keep talking to him by the way, he eventually cuts off your finger and then gives you the Pure Blood Knights medal. So this guys is what's used to teleport you to that farming area, so go into your inventory and use it. Now once you load in here guys, follow this path I take on screen now. You're about to get 400k runes for no work at all. Also make sure you grab this large rune on the way. This is another 50k runes. So follow the path I take. Now once you get here guys, start the bus fire and let the bus kill you. Upon this, select the spawn at the stake of Mocha. This spawns you right outside this bus fight. From here guys, this is the exploit. Take off all your armour and weapons. Then what you need to do is scale up onto these. Now here's the most trickiest part of the video. Once here, you need to step back as far as you can without falling off, facing the opposite direction. You want to jump on that wall behind you. Then you want to press jump but in mid-air press and hold the sprint slash dodge button. If you press it while not in mid-jump, you'll dodge backwards and fall off. So you need to press it mid-jump and hold on to it. Don't let go of that button. From here guys, you need to just simply just run and jump towards that wall behind you. If timed correctly, you will land on the wall. I literally did it second time. From here guys, you can enter this fight and the boss will not fight back. Meaning you can kill it how you want and get a free kill. So put your gear and weapons back on. Summon your spirit and kill the boss. There you go guys, 400k plus 3 runes. Level up straight away by the way at this grace. If you needed the bow and arrow, save a few runes to go back and buy them. Now if you do find it hard to glitch into this boss fight, no problem. You can still farm unlimited amounts of runes without even fighting in this area gathering about 12k runes every 10 seconds easily. Now for this, you do need that bow and arrow. If you didn't buy them earlier, you need to head back to the NPC near that Bellum Church Grace and buy them. Sell him your Lord rune if you don't have the runes. And buy as many bows and arrows as you can, like I said. It's a limit of 99 on you and 600 in your chest. So once you have bow and arrows, guys, use your medallion again to load back into the starting point of this farming area. Once you are here guys, follow the path I take on screen now to this grace, the sweet spot of this area.
Once here guys, equip your bow and that talisman we got earlier and do as I do. You need to come to this spot of the cliff and shoot this bird via aiming that bow. And you want to aim for that kind of C-shaped branch we see there. Once you hit the bird, if done right, the bird runs off the cliff and you are rewarded over 11k runes. Simply run back to that grace guy, sit down, stand back up and the bird resets. You can do this for as long as you like. Rinse and repeat people. Now if you are quick enough, as soon as you get up off the grace point, run to that position on the side of this cliff, aim for that C position on that tree and you'll hit the bird instantly. Making this so efficient is unreal. You also don't have to wait for the bird to fall off the map and for those runes to apply to your tally. As soon as you hit the bird, head to that grace and sit down. The runes will still be applied to you, it doesn't matter. Rinse and repeat these guys until you get bored of leveling. Now this spot right here on the hill, these enemies here give you around 2000 runes each, but you need decent leveled weapons to take them out. So this spot you can come back to later, once you've got much better weapons. But for the time being, farm this bird until you're high enough, le until you're high enough level, so you can progress the game much easier and earn those better weapons. Also keep in mind guys, there are buffs to how many runes you can earn with a possible of 50% extra runes via two buffs. Now I will link a guide in the video description of said two items you can go and get at any time. Well I say at any time, I would have included them in this video. The problem is one of them requires you to fight a boss who would probably kick your ass because there's two of them. And the other one requires you to farm materials, which is also time consuming. But yeah guys, I do hope you enjoy this spot. It will help you get leveled up quicker than any other method in this game. And while well, that's probably guys the hardest I've ever worked on a video guide on YouTube. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like seriously helps me out. If you'd like to share this guide with your friends, I'd appreciate that too. If you're new around here and want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully my beautiful people, I will see you on that next. One.